I've been writing my column for seven years now, banging out my little stories. Sometimes people write me, ask me where the stories come from. I write back, each one's different. I like the other day. I'm trying to get a cab downtown. Borough Hall, Brooklyn. Not in this light. You're better off taking the subway. Some clown hijacked a bus. Now the cops have everything blocked off. You can't go downtown. Another time. That's how it usually starts. On uh, second thought, I'll be minding my own business when I hear something. Maybe a bit of conversation in a bar, or some guy kvetching to his wife on a street corner. Nothing much. Just a dangling participle. And I'm off and running. I should explain. I'm not a reporter. I'm a columnist. I write people, not events. Impressions, not facts. I mean, I don't even belong here. But I just got to know why a guy hijacks a gas-eating, foul-smelling, gets-you-nowhere-real-fast bus. Waiting. We got a hype in the bus who's got no respect for deadlines. Uh, coffee's in the fish market. Fish market's around the corner. Why did you start covering hard news? I'm not. I don't know. I've heard about it from a cabbie. Never listen to cabbies, Mick. It's very dangerous. You could learn something. When are you going to quit that rock and roll rag? Come work for a real paper. When are you going to personnel? Are you kidding? I bring you over. It's Bonus City. They're dying to get you, kid. Hey, Thompson! We got dental now. Uh, I'm Thompson, Island Eye. What's going on? I don't know. The kid's high on something. I just thought it was. We're waiting for him to make first move. Only thing is, he's got a bazooka in there. Bazooka? Bazooka. Yeah, well, I gotta go. Coward, huh? And proud of it. Mickey Thompson? What? Been looking all over for you. Kid on the bus wants you to negotiate for him. Me? Why does that mean? I'm telling you, this kid wants you. He's a fan. A fan? He's a junkie for crying out loud. Probably can't even read. Reads you? He's lying. Ah, come on, Thompson. Everybody knows your style. Small words. Short sentences? You're his kind of writer. You know, that's gonna change. I'm gonna expand my vocabulary, complicate my sentence structure here. Sure you will. Sure you will. Okay, inside the bus, we're bringing Mickey Thompson forward. He is unarmed. He's coming forward and entering the bus. Those officers in the back, please. Man entering the bus is a negotiator. Inside the bus, man entering the bus. So how you doing? I don't know. How many cops you see out there? A lot. Well, I didn't count. Uh, uh, Fifty, maybe. You're a girl. Yeah. So. Oh, no, nothing. So what do you want? Colorado, maybe? Colorado? Yeah. I've seen it on the TV. 
Looks nice, Colorado. You think they'd let me go there? I don't know. I could ask. Colorado, huh? And listen. Tell them it's okay. The bazooka's not loaded. Thank you, God. I owe you one. All right, let's go. Come on, let's go. Take the lead, Tommy. Hey, wait a minute, girl. <laughs> you got to tell me, why the hell did you do it? Why would anybody hijack a bus? Hey, you know, I had no money, and I was scared to fly. Let's go. <laughs> I had no money, and I was scared to fly. You can't make up a line like that. You can't forget it, either. And so you put it in your column. And at the end of the week, they pay you for it. for a newspaper and that's work. Hang around, Liars, it shouldn't take long. Remember that, kid. A newspaper is a document. It's about truth. Welcome to the paper. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mickey Thompson. Oh, hi, uh, Ralph. Ralph Gerling. Oh. Just out of journalism school, right? Mm. Just came in. Oh, you like it here. What do you do? Oh, uh, movies, you know, reviews. Although I am writing, writing a, a book. book. He'll see you now. Oh, I, uh, I have a question. I was just curious. Uh, uh, Mr. Kaiser, they, they call him MF, MF Kaiser. Just, what does the MF stand for? Right. We did it. Broke our records. Lost more money last month than we did the month before. Well, they said it couldn't be done. Uh, I don't know where to cut anymore. I spend my day walking around shutting off lights. Nobody's had a raise, and I had another offer to sell. What did you say? Well, I didn't say no. Uh, you know, sometimes I feel like the band leader in the Titanic around here. Nobody reads weeklies anymore. It's, it's not like the 60s. You could at least, you could hook the kids with the music stuff. Who am I trying to kid? I'm no editor. I'm certainly no businessman. I'm just a beat-up crime reporter who wanted to own his own rack. I don't know. Come on, Marion, you're not gonna sell. <laughs> don't lay heavy money on that, kid. I just may surprise you one day. Now, what? 
about this. Oh, good, huh? Tell me you love it. I love it, but I'm lying. Hey, come on, this is great prose. You see that line there? I stole that yeah, from Hamlet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You write like there's no tomorrow. I know that. Just why can't you write something nice? Nice? Yeah, 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 nice, nice. Used to write such nice little columns. Now all I get out of you is garbage about 14-year-old junkies with bazookas. Oh, Marion. Don't owe Marion me. All I'm asking you to do is do what you used to do. Mickey, you used to write from your heart. That thing on the mailman who wrote letters to lonely people on his route, that was wonderful. The bag lady who turned out to be related to one of the Rockefellers, I wept. You wept? All right, I didn't weep, but I know someone who did. Give me more of that, will you? More weepers, huh? Please. Oh, well, as long as you said please. I guess I won't be seeing you no more. Huh? Ma'am, I've been dropping you off five minutes to midnight at this corner for almost six months now. I've been doing this route for three years. And today, I, I got my seniority. Next week, I drive days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm looking to get me some of this seniority, too. And when I do, then maybe I'll start working days. Then maybe I'll be letting you drive me. <laughs> We're going to get on the bus and go to New Jersey and go to Grandma's house, right? And Nicole, she has that age now, you know. They like going to the bathroom. So I guess we're about halfway there, and the bus stops at a rest stop. So we get out, and Nicole says how she has to go. So I take her in, and I mean, it's a bus stop, right? So they must have about 50 toilets or something. And little Nikki, she look at all these toilets, and her mouth just falls open. She looks up at me and says, Mama, look at this place. Isn't it great? <laughs> so
What do you want from me? Well, I'll tell you. I have this terrible problem. No, really. I mean, I know I haven't known you long, but I can tell you the kind of sensitive, caring woman. Mickey. Who... Okay. Here we go. I happen to be a closet heterosexual. <laughs> Stop laughing. Stop laughing. You don't know the shame, the pain. I remember when I first realized it was summer camp. I was 12, or maybe 11. Mickey. I saw this magazine. Cut to the chase. It's all about dinner. What about dinner? What about dinner? I'd love to. Fine. What time? Well, where are we going? 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 What do you mean going? What ever happened to girls who cook? That's a joke. I'm not serious. That's good. So, where? I know this quiet little place. 21. I was thinking more along the lines of this. French? Chinese. You know, I completely forgot. I do have something tonight. Maybe next week, huh? Do me a favor. Think Chinese. <laughs> That was great, Mickey. Yeah, you know, guys like you can actually give guys like me a good name. Is that really milk? I'll tell you, in this place, you can't really be sure what's in the bottles. Ah, uh, bourbon, straight up. Huh? Oh, please, I got a chest full of smoke already. You know where I've been all day? A burned-out building up in Harlem, 126th Street in Lex. The building burned down around 4 o'clock this morning. A two-year-old kid died in the fire, and nobody can find the mother. Can you believe it? I mean, this is 4 o'clock in the morning. Nobody can find the mother. They think maybe she wasn't home. Nice story, huh? God. What kind of a mother? Would leave her kid alone at 4 o'clock in the morning? That's the question the whole world is asking. Everybody except the DA. Now, he's already crossing his fingers and licking his lips, hoping to get enough evidence to indict on second-degree murder, plus child endangerment. Not that they actually expect to find her. She's long gone. And not exactly worth chasing. I mean, nobody ever got elected, collaring a welfare mother who lost her ticket to food stamps in a fire. Definitely not a lead story. So how many points you give the Giants on Sunday? Hey, Thompson! Yeah, 126 in Lex, please. I'll tell you the truth, mister. I don't like to go that far uptown. It's against my religion. Oh, a man with religious convictions. Well, I, uh, understand completely. Then again, in a world as big as ours, we've got to learn to accommodate all beliefs, all faiths. If only everyone felt as you do. <laughs> Tell me, let me guess. This must be your summer place. Now, wait here. I don't plan on staying long. What, the season hasn't started yet? Hey! I'm just going into this building here. Kind of look around. Got your ticket? What are you talking? Ticket. You're here to look at Cora Jane's place, right? See where the little baby died? I mean, that's what you're here for, right? Well, it's gonna cost. No, I don't think so. 
I'm Mickey Thompson. I write a column for the Island Eye. I hear you. And you get paid for writing that column, right? Well, my friend, haven't you heard? This is the age of trickle-down economics, and I'm standing here with my head pointed toward the sky and my mouth hanging open, and I'm looking for my trickle. So where's your ticket? Well, just how much is this ticket? Now, that all depends on what you want. I want to find out what kind of a mother leaves her kid alone at four in the morning to die in a fire. Do you really? You might not like what you hear. Look, I'm not a reporter. I'm just a guy who goes out and tries to find out what makes something happen, what makes a person tick. That's what I do. Now, I think your friend Corey, she might have a story to tell. I don't see anybody else around here trying to knock down her door, find out her side of things. Might be worth something to her, don't you think? So keep your ticket. And, uh, do me a favor. Tell Corey James if she's got something to say. Give me a call. Anybody know who won the Knicks game last night? Oh, you're right, who cares? That's not like the old days. Willis, Frazier. How'd you guys feel about Clyde? I liked him. Well, here we are at the corner. And here's the bus. Want something? Me? Want something? What makes you think I want something? <laughs> you have your Oliver Twist face on. What? You're hungry orphan, look. I'm not advancing another cent, Mickey. Wait a second. Did, did I ask? Did, did, did I say anything? I already advanced you into the next century. Not another cent. You gotta grow up. Learn how to handle your money. Mary, you're so wrong. You're so off the mark on this. I, I wasn't gonna ask you for money. That's good. Leave. I was just thinking after work, I might stop by Stephanie's. Your daughter? My ex-wife? Your only shot at a grandchild? How much? Can I have a shot of bourbon, please? And an empty tumbler. You're a serious drinker. Not me. I don't drink at all. Really? Truly. Bad for you. Rot your liver. Rot your kidneys. Cooper Roger. See you. Hello, Mr. Thompson. How are you? It's, it's so good to see you. Good to be seen, Jose. I have to tell you, we miss you around here, Mr. Thompson. Uh, uh, you coming back? Working on it, Jose. Working on it. Uh -huh. Tell me, is uh, Mrs. Thompson in? Yeah, she, she's in all right. Is she alone? Alone? How you say, uh, by herself? By herself. Uh, now I understand. 
Oh, yes. Yes, she's out there all by herself. Thank you, Jose. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Uh, you keep up the good work, too. Stephanie! Steph! Who is it? What do you want? Mickey? Yo, Steph, it's me. I forgot my key. What do you mean you forgot your key? What do you mean, what do I mean? I forgot. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, it, it completely slipped my mind. I don't live here anymore, do I? No, no, you don't. No, you reek of whiskey. No. Yes. You never used to drink. Well, you know, live alone. Oh, I'm so ashamed. I'm forgetting we were divorced. Get in here. I'll make some coffee. Coffee would be nice. What was that? Oh, I'm sorry. I must really be tanked. I'll pay for it. I'll pay for it. Be a couple of minutes brewing. So? So, when did you start drinking? What time is it? It's a joke. I don't know. I'm not keeping you from anything. Well... I hate it out there, Steffi. I want to come back. Stop it, Nikki. No, I mean it. I don't like it. I... I'll change. It's only been five months. I miss you. Come on. I see more of you now than when we were married. That's not true. All right, all right, it's a little true. But you'll see, I'll, I'll, I'll change. I've, I mean, no more running around the city till dawn, no more twisted phone calls from weird people in the middle of the night. I, I, I was really, I got it all figured out. I'm, I'm switching my beat. I'm going to become a white-collar columnist. Strictly society stuff, you know, who wore what to wear. You'll love it. It's you know, famous people, big parties, great food. Mickey, you're not giving this a chance. You'll get used to it. Better at it. What are you talking? Better. Oh, women? Is that, is that what you're talking? Women? Is that why you think I'm here? Yeah, well, I got news for you. I'm great at it. Believe me, I, I spend a lot of time with a lot of women. I mean, sometimes I wake up, I don't even know who it is sleeping next to me. Yeah. I know that feeling. Great. Thank you. That's just what I needed to hear. What I'm trying to say. I like this better. What about me? What about what I like? Go ahead, answer it. If it's a guy, I'm puking right here on this expensive rug. Hello? Oh. Hi, Dad. Yeah. Hey, dear. Hold on. It's so hard to speak to you. You sure sobered up fast. Marion? Mickey, a lady named Corey James called. Told me to tell you she wants to talk. 
night in half an hour at the Broad Street Station downtown. Any of this makes sense to you? Yeah, tons. I'm on my way. I can't be second, Mickey. They say the news never sleeps. And that's true. But what the news does is its own business. Right now, I'd give my right arm to be in a warm bed catching some Z's. Forgetting what a rotten day it's been. Couldn't get a date. Got intimidated by a tall, dark stranger. Proved to the lady I love that everything she hates about me is true. I also need to use a bathroom desperately. That's showbiz. Wait there, I'll come to you. No, wait a second. I like it like this. Just stay there. Hey, now, wait a minute. Corey, you gotta trust me. I mean, I'm here because You're I... here because it suits you to be here. Because it's your job to be here. In case you haven't heard, I'm the lady that killed her own baby. I'm wanted. Yeah. But there's something... Yeah, but what? I don't even know you, mister. You're right. I'm here because it suits me. But I'm also here to help. Oh, mister, don't help me, please. I have had all the help I'm ever gonna need. You understand? I've been depending on somebody, something, all my life. You know what that feels like? We all depend on You're some... not listening to me, mister. I'm 20 years old, and I'm saying all my life, somebody, something, the welfare, my parents, boyfriend. Do you know what that feels like? No, you don't. You couldn't. I had Nicole when I was 18. And I remember when they first gave it to me at the hospital, county hospital. I thought, this little girl is never going to have to depend on nobody other than me. My baby's dead. And you write that I was doing what I was supposed to be doing, working! You watch the TV, you listen to the papers, working! That's supposed to be the answer. And that's what I was doing, the only way I know how. $160 a week. I took home 111 I could've got more welfare. And now my baby's dead. Where'd y'all expect me to find daycare midnight to eat on my money, huh? You think I wanted to leave her alone? You wanna hear something funny? I'll save him my money, yeah. Thinking about getting a part-time job. Maybe go back to school and finish. Get a diploma, get a better job. Ain't that the way it's supposed to work? You got enough to write yet? drum roll. Like, get it straight. Corey James is a hero. A little lady that bought the bull about pulling yourself up by your bootstraps, hook, line, and sinker. Everywhere she turned, people wanted to help her. 
help keep her down. Oh, they'd give her welfare gladly. They'd give her food stamps in a minute. But the things Corey wanted, needed, like daycare, so she could work without worrying about her kid. Well, these are tough times. Now, wait a sec. Change that. They tell us these are tough times. Yeah. And now the kicker. But Corey James didn't let that stop her. It's a crazy world you live in when you hunt down killers like Corey James. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. What? No, I'm meeting Kathy Lord. Right this way. Ms. Lord? Mr. Thompson. I'm sorry I'm late, but I'm not a morning person. Thank you. Which would be all right, except I'm not an afternoon person either. Sleep seems to be what I do best. <laughs> You're not a bad writer either. Uh, thank you. Uh, look, Miss Lord, before we get into anything, I, uh, I think I should tell you up front that it would take a lot of dynamite to blow me out of the island eye. Uh, I should also tell you that I find it tough to uh, picture a column like mine in a magazine like Single Woman. Mr. Thompson, were you led to believe this meeting had something to do with our being interested in you as a writer? Oh. Well, I, I mean, I got a call. Mr. Thompson, I invited you to lunch today because our editorial committee thought you'd make a wonderful single man of the month. What? You wouldn't have a match, would you? Uh-oh. Got a hunch. Oh, Kimasabi, I'm getting Charlie Horse just watching you. Any chance of us uh, breaking for just a minute so we can talk? So, you want to know what it's like being single man of the month, huh? You a candidate? Well, they ask, but uh... oh, I write a column. I thought it might be interesting. Interesting? Send it to Ripley. He wouldn't believe it. When they first called and asked, you know, you get a notion what it's going to be like. Then they print your picture and your name, and all that really happens is the guys in the office razz you for about a week. <laughs> Gave the lady I'm living with a thrill, though. That's it? Well... These started coming. A week after the issue hit the stands. Over a hundred letters there. Most of them sent pictures. <laughs> but, uh... Hey, who wants to call a girl who'd write to a picture in a magazine, huh? Gee. Uh, I want those back, by the way. The thing that surprises you immediately is that almost all of them are pretty. I'd counted on an envelope full of uh, lonely women, plain faces, and boring lives. But the letters tell a different story. Corporate stationery. Impressive title next to the writer's name. They love the opera. Sunday football games. They're dream girls, most of them. Or at least they seem to be. So why would someone like that sit down and audition? Spill their guts in a letter to a stranger they've met only in the pages of a magazine. Why would a woman... Yo! Who is this? Is this Mickey Thompson? No, it's Neil Simon. I'm just watching Mickey's apartment while he's in Hollywood writing big movies. Thank you. Hey, for what? The odd couple? I enjoyed doing it. Who am I talking to? Get it straight. Corey James is a hero. Thank you. Corey? 
made me sound important, like all this baby mattered. It does. You do. I'm leaving town. Got relatives in Buffalo who know a lawyer says maybe you can help me. So maybe you buy a girl a hot dog before a train? Is that where you are now, the train station? Well, you're living life a little dangerously, aren't you, Corey? I mean... <laughs> I know what you mean. Ain't nobody looking. Guess maybe I'm just not that important. So you coming? Yeah, where? Uh, that big lobby where they have the clock? The clock? Oh, yeah, the clock. Yeah, sure. Um, I'll be there in half an hour. Forgive me, but aren't you Mickey Thompson, the writer? You are, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. You look just like that picture they run of you next to your stories. Yeah, well... You waiting for someone? Yeah. aiding and abetting a fugitive from justice. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. They don't keep you waiting long. They're very good that way. Not that I have any basis for comparison. I've never been in a place like this before in my life. But I figured, you know, they'd maybe sit and squirm for a while or something. But I'm just waiting for my wife to come pick me up. It's all computer time, right? So I'm supposed to take this uh, client to the Knicks game. It's something I try to do every year. So, you know, the guy calls me, though, at 4.30. He can't make it. So now I got a built-in alibi for the wife, right? So I figure, what the hell? I go down to the garden, sell the tickets for twice what I paid for them, and now I'm all set for a big night in the town. So I'm walking down 6th, looking for, you know, Good steakhouse or something. All of a sudden, there she is. This chick, I'm talking. Good looking. Good looking. She gives me the eye. What am I going to do? I'm not a monk. Gives me a price. We go to her place. Yeah. 20 minutes later, I'm back on six, still looking for a steakhouse. And I realize I got no wallet. <laughs> I don't know what got into me. I go running back to her place, still charging up the stairs, and I start kicking down the door. I think I thought I was in a movie or something. I'm kicking down the door. Trouble was, turns out to be the wrong door. <laughs> People that live there call the cops. Here I am waiting for my wife. Is that one for the books or what? <laughs> Felicia, Felicia, am I glad to see you? Do me a favor, Phil. The next time you drop your drawers for some stranger, put your wallet in your mouth. Mr. Thompson, the lieutenant will see you now. Look who's here. Got a typewriter in sight, so I think we're safe. You can go, Sergeant. Oh, Mickey, Mickey, Mickey. 
What are you doing knocking down police officers? Hmm? Interfering with investigations. That's against the law, you know. Excuse me, forgive me. This is some big deal case I busted up, huh, Lucas? Getting a dangerous killer like Corey James off the streets. How long have I known you, Mickey? A while, right? Hey, I got a hot flash for you. This case was not a big deal. In fact, it was no deal at all until you started giving it ink. Capiche? No, I don't capiche at the all. The hell you don't. I've had a man tailing you ever since I read that column of yours. You want to hear something you're not going to like? You create your own problems, Mickey. And what bothers me is I think you like it. I'm not holding you. Get lost. But what about Corey James? What about her? You mean, are we going to keep looking? I'm a good cop, Mickey. I go where I'm kicked. Oh, come on, Lucas. What, don't you have any soul left, any conscience? Why is it you rest on your pillow at night, huh? All right, oh, yeah, yeah, I capiche. Damn right, I capiche. Corey James is... Corey James is guilty of trying too hard, period. She, she's guilty of not wanting to be treated like garbage by some welfare worker who looked at her sideways because she didn't want to waste her life staring at a mailbox waiting for a check to come or living in fear that someday she'd answer one of the welfare board questions wrong and then end up with no money or food for her kids. It's a terrible crime, isn't it, Lucas? I'll tell you what she's guilty of. She's guilty of a, uh, just, a, just a little too much pride and a lot of bad luck. That's what she's guilty of. Would you look at me, Lucas? We're killing that lady. Her kid's dead, her life's ruined. We haven't done enough? I don't mind telling you, I'm a little lost here. I'm, I'm confused. Who are the good guys and who are the bad guys in this world, huh? She through? Let me ask you a question. Why would a loving mother like Cora James go out and buy $10,000 worth of life insurance on her kid two days before she dies? Wait a second. The poor as she is. Now, this is last Monday. So you tell me again about the, the mixture of pride and luck and... How did you put it? Hmm? It was gorgeous. Now, let me do my work. Don't start with me. Just let me in. Now, just hold on. Stephanie, damn it, open the door. I need you. Look, Mickey, you can't stay. I don't recall anybody giving you a choice. Mickey, we're divorced. Divorced. You know what that word means? Why can't you ever play by the rules? Didn't you hear me? I said I needed you. Is somebody here? Somebody in the bedroom? Mickey! I invited him over for dinner. He had a couple too many. Hard to believe. This guy was a fighter pilot in the big war. He sat in restaurants full of killers. He hated his guts. And once he told me how. As for laughs, he and some of the reporters he worked with would get drunk and uh, walk against the traffic on the Queensboro Bridge. Like chicken with a hacksaw racing to Midtown to end their shifts. He did all. 
all that, and he's terrified of sleeping alone. Me too. Tonight, just, just tonight. Don't do this. good at everything except being married. <laughs> Says who? Oh, playing dirty. <laughs> I mean it, I'll change. No. No, you won't. You can't. What do you mean, can't? Ever hear the one about the swan and the scorpion? There's a scorpion on the bank of a pond. And he sees the swan and he waves him over. He says, how about a ride to the other side? The swan says, sure. And the scorpion hops on. When they get about halfway across the pond, suddenly out of nowhere, the scorpion stings the swan. And the swan starts to sink. And when they're both about to drown, the swan says to the scorpion, why'd you do that? And the scorpion replies, what do you mean, why? That's what I do. This craziness, Mickey, isn't going to change. You can't change it. Uh, oh, uh, well, uh, I'm almost embarrassed. Hey, it's my job to help. Well, uh, I bought some insurance. Well, good for you. And I'd like to buy more. So far, so good. But I, I don't remember the name of the guy I bought my policy from. He was dumb, right? Look, this isn't a big problem. Do you know your policy number? What can I say? Do you know your name? Uh, James. C. James. You. Oh, gee, you scared the hell out of me. Oh, not a good thing to do. I'm a policyholder. It would have cost you plenty. What are you doing in Mr. Swanson's office? Looking for Mr. Swanson. I'm, uh, I'm Mickey Thompson. I'm, uh, I'm a columnist. Been writing about Corey James. Mr. Swanson was just sick when he heard about the James woman. I'm expecting him in later this morning, by the way. Can I have him call you? Would you? Yeah, looks to be a real family man. Well, he's very proud of them. And they're very proud of him. He writes more insurance than anyone in this office. Well, I'll certainly let him know you dropped by.
Maybe you could tell me something. Why does a lady buy insurance on her kid? Insurance on herself, maybe, but... Why on her kid? I'm sorry, I... No, that's okay. That's okay. late. MF would like the pleasure of your company in his office. Did a Mr. Swanson call for me this morning? Swanson. Mm. Holler for me if he does. Mm -hmm, right. Oh, Sylvia, you got to do something for me. I, I got deadlines on top of deadlines here. My brains are mush. Oh, talk to me, lover. Hmm? You ever hear of the single man of the month? Is this a pop quiz? Go through this envelope for me, find a girl, get her in here, make an appointment. Can you do that for me? We are talking lunch, are we not? Absolutely. Lunch, dinner, breakfast, in bed, whatever you want. I owe you, I owe you big. Mm, damn right. So? Yeah. You don't say. I don't say. Getting an early start on this week's? You mean the one where I apologize for championing a child killer? Good thing you don't work for a daily. Marion, you know where I've been all morning? No, where? Looking for clues. I, mean, I want it to be heroes and villains. I've I want to be able to point at some person and say, guilty. And I want like hell for that person not to be Corey James. I mean, I go out on a limb, and I'm wrong, and now it's a page one story. It's not my ego. No. I swear, it's not my ego. It's just, you meet a lady like Corey James, and, and your gut tells you, hey, she loved her kid. The fact. Makes it kind of hard to want to sit down and write. Huh. Maybe that's why you don't pay us, we pay you. You know, when I went to work in the Journal American, the first thing I had you do was sit down and write your own obituary. I remember when they asked me. I turned to my editor and I said, why? And he said, because you may not feel up to it when the time comes. It's what we do for a living, Mickey. So I'll go home and talk into that little machine of yours. Do that for me, will you? I got a paper to lock up tonight.
Forgive me, Father. I've sinned. How long has it been since your last confession? I don't know. I, I mean, I'm not a Catholic, Father. What brings you here? I don't know. I, I feel bad, I guess, about what I do. What do you do? Well, it's strange. I, I, I spend uh, an hour with a person, uh, a day, uh, a week maybe. I, I scrape some little piece of them away. I, it's some story that's in them. I, Think about it. Make a judgment. I get paid for that. Me too. Door. Yeah, I hear him. Michelle, who? Oh, yeah. Oh, God, I'm a terrible person. All right, all right. All right, I'm coming. Mickey Thompson? Columnist? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm sorry to disturb you, but uh, I just couldn't sleep. You don't know me, but I read your column all the time. Really? All when the I time? Run... Well, I can't tell you what this means to me, but it's 6 o'clock in the morning, and I just found out I'm entertaining. Michelle. Who was that? Oh, that, oh, that was a fan. Uh, Michelle, did I happen to mention that I'm divorced? Mm, four or five times. Did I happen to slip in there anywhere that uh, I'm still kind of in love with my ex-wife? Just before you showed me where the bathroom was. Oh. Well. Mickey, you want me to leave, don't you? Oh, where'd you get that from? Come on. Oh, wait a second. Uh, Michelle. Michelle, I, I mean, uh, you're taking this the wrong way. I mean, I invited you over here, didn't I? No. You haven't been divorced long, have you? And just a guess. I bet you're not much of a drinker, either. I'm not much of a sipper. Give it time. Oh, I mean, really, I never drink. Just yesterday was one of the... Swanson. Swanson? <sighs> oh, my pants. Oh, uh... Oh, oh, uh, listen, uh... Uh... Michelle. Michelle! I had a great time. I, I mean, a, a super time. And, uh, well, now that I know where you live, uh, I'll call you again soon. Mickey, this is your place. Oh, yeah, right. See, that must be kismet. Gotta run.
Swanson? Yeah. You're a tough man to get hold of. Yes, I am. I couldn't sleep. I was feeling guilty. Now, that's funny, you know, because if I'm guilty of anything, I'm guilty of pushing too hard. Selling too hard. I don't believe that's a crime. I like to think it's one of the things that made this country great. Selling. Selling hard. No one's blaming you for anything, Mr. Swanson. Look, a lot of people... A lot of people take out whole life on their children. It's an excellent investment. You know what I mean? The premiums mature. By the time a child reaches the age of maturity, he or she has accrued a very nice little nest egg. Plus, a life insurance policy at a price they can't touch as an adult. Why'd you knock on my door, Mr. Swanson? She didn't want that policy. Now, Mutual Fidelity may not want to hear that. It might cost them some money. But she already had whole life on herself. I sold it to her the year before. There was no husband. And the... That lady had nothing on her mind when she bought that policy. Except maybe getting rid of a chubby insurance salesman who'd eaten up her lunch break. It was keeping her from getting back to her workstation. Thank you, Mr. Swanson. She loved the baby. That's really why she bought. Because she loved that baby. I know that, Mr. Swanson. Thompson. You know where I slept last night? Here, that's where. Hey, Marion. You can't? No, oh, no, oh, you, you don't care. She Nikki, I gotta work do it. I want you to listen to the word. I want you to Innocent think about the word, be. huh? And then commit it and its meaning and the to memory. The best part is no one knows yet. The but word, Nikki. Not the, the DA, word, Nikki, not deadline. the TV stations, not deadline. the other papers. It's all ours. What's all ours? The, uh, the guy who sold her the insurance, he just swore to me she didn't want it. He had to put a gun to her head to get her to buy it. What were you saying before? No, nothing. No one else has this? I'm telling you, no one. Not the cops, not the lawyers, not even court. Oh, jeez. Oh, where are you going? I gotta find her. Oh, uh, Marion. How much? There wasn't a lot left to say or do. Swanson gave a deposition. The district attorney decided not to file charges. It was a big story that Tuesday, a small story that Wednesday, and no story at all that Thursday. Friday, I picked up Corey, and we went to the train station. I'm gonna miss you, Mickey Thompson. It's my last pitch. Why don't you hang around? No good. Gotta go. Gotta get to living again, you know? Yeah, sure, I know. And now she's gone. Left our city. The place she was born, the place her baby died. A week's gone by. Interest rates are up. So is unemployment. The headlines are filled with politics. This one's running, that one isn't. 
glad I work for a weekly, not a daily. And I'm not a reporter. I'm a columnist. So forgive me. Can't get Corey James out of my mind. I miss her. So I'm writing about her one more week. Crying for a dead child one more time. Last time. Get it straight. Corey James is a hero. Still buying the bull about being able to make fresh starts in new cities. That all you need is a little bit of ambition and a lot of desire and you can get ahead in this world. Crazy notion. Thursday? What? Dinner. One more time for the hard of hearing? Those ladies who wrote to the single man of the month. You asked me to get one in. She is waiting in MF's bunker. Oh, Sylvie, you're wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, I know that. Oh, here's the winning essay. Huh. An orchid would go nice with my dress. Why does a woman like you write to a guy in a magazine? Thank you. Uh, would you excuse me a minute? Wife, my only shot at a grandchild. Please. Oh, well, as long as you said please. 